everyone, and welcome to the Grolier Club, a special place for book collectors. Um, my name is Karina Reynolds. I am a member and I have a book problem. Um, <laughs> I primarily collect books about artist books, which is particularly relevant to tonight's talk. Um, this talk is brought to you by the Contemporary Artist Book Conference in partnership with Center for Book Arts. That's my other book affiliation. And I want to give extra special thanks to Deirdre Lawrence, who made this talk, in-person talk, possible. Um, if you haven't seen her exhibition upstairs, uh, it's on the second floor and it's called Language, Decipherment, and Translation, and it has a particular synergy with what Claudia is going to be speaking about today. So um, it's on view through May 11th, and you can see it at any time. So to tell you a little bit about the Contemporary Artist Book Conference, since 2008, it has been presenting in-depth talks, panels, and conversations to further the critical dialogue surrounding artist books. Um, if you've attended one of these in the past, you may remember a dark, hot, very small basement that we all used to go down to, the basement of PS1, for the talks. And I would say that this is a big step up. Um, so thank you to the Grolier Club for hosting us tonight. It's really nice to have air conditioning. Um, so I also want to mention that this is the first talk of this year's Contemporary Artist Book Conference. Um, the rest of the conference is happening on May 9th and 10th. And those talks will be happening virtually, so you can tune in from the comfort of your own home. And the theme that we're exploring this year is of artist books as expanded literacy. The committee, a group of volunteers, which is made up of librarians, collectors, um, artist book practitioners, enthusiasts, we all asked, um, how can the artist book expand upon ideas of information and visual literacy, conceptions of language, data visualizations, methods of presenting, research, and even more? And that's why we decided to invite Claudia De La Torre to speak tonight as our keynote. As an artist and publisher and educator, De La Torre delves into the potential of publishing as an artistic practice. And I could say, as a collector of her work, that um, her artist books really do delve into the bookness, which I really appreciate. Um, through workshops conducted over the past five years, she has guided creatives in transitioning their ideas into tangible forms highlighting the interactive nature of books where time, space, and material converge. Claudia is a Mexican Berlin-based artist, and um, I want you all to welcome her to the podium. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Corina, for the nice introduction. And thanks, everyone, for being here. Um, before I dive into this conversation that we are all here for, I do want to acknowledge the division that has occurred in the book community recently, and specifically CBA's recent role in the controversy. I am wholeheartedly against violence, and I desire for peace for everyone impacted by the horrific events in the Middle East. My decision to speak today only signifies my desire to continue learning and growing alongside my community, rather than allowing, allowing these events to further tear us apart. I hope we can come together to learn, be vulnerable, and support one another in dialogue. Good evening, I'm going to start now my presentation. I vividly remember the first artist book I ever made. It was a modest, soft cover 
20-page drop-down book, featuring subtle text running along the bottom edge of each page. Upon opening, black and white portraits fill the spreads, depicting individuals gazing both towards each other and away. Printed on 80 gram pastel orange paper, I titled it, Look at Me. The sheer joy of setting 30 copies of it on my desk is a memory I will never forget. Walking up, waking up the next morning and gazing at those stacks, I felt a profound sense of freedom. It dawned on me that all I needed was a printer, a few scraps of paper, and an idea to create a work of art. From that moment, I was hooked. Since then, almost 15 years ago, I haven't stopped. I've conceptualized, designed, produced, and published over 90 books and editions. Sharing my passion with over 100 individuals through artist book workshops, and now I stand before you, eager to take you on a journey through my creative practice. That first book taught me a lot. It helped me understand the importance of intertwining content and ideas and how to translate those into a physical form. Even now, it serves as a reminder of how simple tools and one idea can produce something meaningful. Books are meeting places where tactility, concepts, and ideas converge acting as multi-layered portals that require an active reader to come alive. As book lovers, I am certain we've all encountered artist books that have left a lasting impression. What was it that fascinated you about them? Was it the multi-sensory experience, the emotional resonance, or perhaps the new perspectives they've offered on familiar concepts? Regardless, we can agree that artist books transcend mere objects, serving as catalysts for transformation, capable of leaving a lasting impression in our thoughts and in our emotions. As Jorge Luis Borges beautifully said, and I quote, of all man's instruments, the most wondrous, no doubt, is the book. The other instruments are extensions of this body. The microscope, the telescope, are extensions of sight. The telephone is the extension of his voice. Then we have the plow and the sword, extensions of the arm. But the book is something else altogether. The book is an extension of memory and imagination. This insight captures the essence of what draws me to the world of books and artist books in particular. They are not merely objects. They are extensions of our very being, extensions of our memory and our imagination. I've been deeply engaged in publishing as an artistic practice for over 13 years. Starting back in 2011, with the creation of my independent publishing house, Backbone Books, <coughs> giving workshops and publishing as a creative practice are all intertwined fields in which I move. In my view, artist books are those books created by artists. However, the form of the book doesn't have to adhere to the traditional codex format. It can take various forms, such as a box filled with objects, a folded page within an envelope, or even a loose sheet of paper. Nonlinearity is, is a defining feature of these works, characterized by the absence of a fixed structure that dictates a linear reading experience. While, con while conventional books follow a linear path, artist books offer a multitude of courses, paths, and readings, inviting readers to explore and interpret them in diverse ways. 
We often perceive books as linear objects, meant to be read from start to finish, page by page. However, this linearity isn't inherent to, to the book itself. A book can be approached from any point at any time, regardless of, it, of its intended reading order. Our tendency to view nonlinear access as challenging is largely due to repetition and habit. In truth, embracing nonlinearity highlights the physical, uh, physical, physical act of reading and elevates materiality to a crucial aspect of the reading process. I create bookworks that are heavily reliant on the physical form of the book itself. To me, a book is more than just a collection of pages. It is a medium with, with unique properties and possibilities. Consequently, every formal decision I make, such as determining the size, scale, and type of paper, is made deliberately and with awareness, as each choice contributes significantly to the final work of art. Clive Pilpot, a renowned figure in the field of artist books, has contributed significantly to the discourse surrounding the term bookwork. He suggests that the, that the term bookwork implies a broader conceptual framework than simply referring to a physical book. Hillwood argues that a bookwork encompasses not only the physical object, but also the ideas, concepts, and, aesthetic, and aesthetic intentions that inform the creation. I agree with this perspective, that a bookwork is a holistic entity that embodies the artistic vision of the creator, extending beyond the traditional notion of a book as a mere vessel for conveying information. So, why do artists continue to be drawn to this medium? What is it about books that captivates artists from such diverse disciplines? The allure lies in the fact that artist books exist at the crossroad of multiple, multiple art forms. They exist in the limit of disciplines, ranging from literature to photography, sculpture, and graphic arts. They offer a unique opportunity to reimagine how information is organized, aiming to create an artwork that engages all the senses. These books transcend being mere containers. They are dynamic, mutable, and alive, evolving with time. Leaping from an artist book is akin to a dance, with a reader free to move forward, backward, and even turn pages as they please. This interactive aspect allows readers to actively engage with the content. During the talk, I'll showcase a diverse selection of book works that embody these qualities. Each work presents unique ways for readers to navigate through visual and textual elements, encouraging active participation. I have been deeply involved in all of them, whether as an educator, publisher, or artist. Since 2019, I've been enthusiastically leading artist book workshops in my Berlin-based studio. These workshops were born out of a recognition and the need for a, de for a dedicated space where creatives could gather, exchange ideas, offer feedback, and with my guidance, transform their concepts into tangible works of art. As a passionate member of the Artist Books community, I was drawn to its collaborative and supportive ethos. I wanted to actively contribute to this community by sharing my knowledge, resources, and experiences, and experiences acquired thus far. My studio served as an ideal space for this purpose. Equipped with technical tools and a vast collection of artist books and reference materials for inspiration. The motto of the workshop is three days, your idea, my expertise, one final dummy. With a maximum of four artists attending, each bringing their unique work and ideas. There is no predetermined, 
predetermined outcome or binding method. Instead, participants engage in a process by exploring why is it that they want to create an artist book and discovering the potential of materiality as an active agent in the narrative. The workshop aims to expand perceptions of what a book can be and make a physical object an integral part of the reading experience. While there is no fixed formula, the focus is on honing and refining ideas to find the best tangible form. Conceptualizing a book is a non-linear process, characterized by discovery and decision-making, where ideas may take unexpected turns and evolve organically. At the start of each workshop, I distribute what I call a worksheet, containing eight prompts crafted to steer artists through their creative journey. This worksheet prompts participants to detail the materials they brought, brainstorm keywords and ideas, sketch pre preliminary concepts, contemplate the spatial and temporal dimensions of their work, devise strategies for engaging their audience, deliberate on the edition format, and staging the display of the final work. These exact prompts mirror the ones I personally, I personally use when conceptualizing my own book works. Throughout the three-day workshop, I serve as a guide, anchoring participants in conversations and discussions about their ideas and the best approach to translating them into a, into a physical form. I often remind them that creating a book is akin to composing music, with its crescendos and its pauses. Every image, every word on the page occupies space. The act of reading is characterized by the hand that turns the pages. When read, it resonates. For me, a, a, a successful workshop is one where artists unearth new insights about themselves and their concepts during the bookmaking journey. It's incredibly rewarding to learn that the books they've crafted have made their way to exhibitions, collections, published, or have been produced in multiple editions. Determining whether the book will be a one-off or published as a multiple edition is a crucial part of the decision-making process. In my view, that decision should be integrated into the conceptual framework of the work itself. Now, I would like to highlight Olga Pipnik's Spinescapes, a shelf-specific dummy made during the Artist Books Workshop. Okay, you will come. <laughs> yeah, that's the Spinescapes. And I quote, what defines the landscape? A series of abstract shapes in a series of abstract shapes that we recognize as a space. Can a book be a landscape and a collection of books? If you defocus your eyes, what can you see? A sequence of, of shapes that change as you move along the bookshelf. I see spinescapes. End of quote. These are the closing lines of Olga's work. Form, contraform, color, and tone take us through life-size reproductions of her personal library. Wonderf wonderfully bound, this leporello considers the backside as a room filled with whispers that when read, either in Russian, Spanish, or English, guide us through the different spaces within the folds of the book. To consider the book as a living creature, and as a work of art, is what the workshop is all about. Some of the dummies created by the participants have found their way to publication as, as an edition, with three of them being released under my publishing house Backbone Books. As a publisher, I play a crucial role 
in providing a platform that may otherwise be challenging for, for artists to access and to make the work visual, uh, visible and available. This aspect was not intentionally anticipated when I began conducting workshops. Yet, it has demonstrated the organic intertwining of thinking, creating, and publishing as interconnected fields. This approach I take with the participants of my workshop mirrors the way I collaborate with the artists I publish. It's all about fostering open dialogue, collaboration, and a, and a continuous exchange of ideas. Whether in the workshop setting or in the realm of publishing, I believe in the power of conversation, collaboration, and trusting the process to bring out the best possible results. I would like now to highlight one of the books which I've published as a result of this workshop. The Bob Hamro Basic Kit 2017.2022 is an index of artistic objects, materials, and tools. As a never complete, as never complete components, they form an artwork in itself, which can be understood as an open game a processual approach within Sarah's work. This publication has a form of a card game without rules. It contains 98 playing cards, three transparent cards, and a booklet, and offers myriad of possibilities with regards to forming connections, associations, or relations. Content can be generated through the objects of the, of the playing cards alone or in conjunction with the graphic elements on the transparent cards, or with the text fragments within the index. There are no specific rules to the game. Rules can be generated by the viewers and changed over and over again. I attribute part of the workshop success to its location in Berlin. A renowned creative hub that, that it has been a joy welcoming participants from faraway places such as Aruba, Dubai, the USA, Chile, Finland, among others. Their diverse backgrounds enrich the conversations held during the workshop, fostering a dynamic exchange of ideas that ultimately culminates in the creation of unique bookworks. This experience reaffirms the relevance and interest in the creation of bookworks in the contemporary art scene now more than ever. Other Berlin-based spaces, all run by women, have proven to be places where the artistic community can gather and create, sharing knowledge, energy, and building community. Colorama, it's a project space in Berlin run by Johanna Majewski. They publish artist books and experimental comics, prints, research projects, and run an educational workshop and membership program around self-publishing, self printing, and binding. Their workshop is a platform for sharing resources with the wider community, helping people to learn, to connect, and to develop new skills outside of institutional structures. That's Johanna. On the other hand, there is Bild by Berlin, a photo book, a photo book uh, shop that runs a book scene making workshop. It is led by Yuvali Levy, who also runs the self publishing house Replica. And last but not least, the wonderful gallery and bookshop space and book house led by Jae Kyung Kim. She runs a bookbinding workshop with Julia Fabricius and Lea Keshke. Opening up our, new, of our own spaces is very important for the flourishing of the publishing community. By opening up our own spaces and maintaining such, uh, such spaces uh, as, public, as public, we not only provide opportunities for networking and skill development, but also contribute to the diversity and richness of voices in publishing. I often remind participants of the workshop that a dummy marks not the conclusion, but the beginning of the bookmaking journey. 
It's a starting point for refining, tweaking, and making necessary adjustments. Every decision made during the process holds significance. I, have, um, I am particularly focused on underscoring the symbiotic relationship between materiality and aesthetic decisions, as they are deeply entwined with the conceptual essence of the work. When these elements are seeming, seemingly integrated, they have the ability to amplify and elevate the overall impact of the artwork. To finish my presentation, I'd like to share one of my own book, work, book projects with you. As I believe, it highlights the significance of the process, concept, and deliberate nature of its existence as a book. It interlinks language and imagery, creating a layered interplay that offers readers multiple entry points into the work. This approach is crucial in my, pers in my perspective of viewing the book as an artwork. And it's a philosophy I aim to share with my students, regardless of the materials they choose to work with. The project takes on three forms, an installation, an altered book, and a paperback edition, offering a unique perspective on the concept of the, uh, of the book within space. Cities in Blight, or the Satellite Variations, is a work I created using language as my medium. Taking as a starting point, James Blish's 1970 science fiction novel, Cities in Flight. I meticulously selected one word from each page by folding the pages and painting them, the resulting shapes, uh, the resulting shapes black. These folds became arrows pointing to specific words. This process generated new sentences throughout the book, ultimately weaving a coherent side A narrative within the original novel. Similar to a satellite orbiting the moon, this artist book orbits around Blish's work. Beyond simply presenting a new way of reading existing material, the book's composition, like triangles amidst the white space, evokes abstract art. This piece illustrates the myriad possibilities that unfold from word combinations, whilst also acknowledging the limitations imposed by the book's physical, physical pages, pages. Books typically offer intimate, one-to-one -one encounters, challenging to exhibit in traditional gallery settings. Thus, when displayed as an installation, I include a record player where side A can be heard. However, recognizing that each page has two sides, I opt to create a third narrative. By folding the same corners in the opposite direction, I generate a random selection of words, a process reminiscent of surrealism or Dadaism. This resulting narrative forms the side B of the story mirroring the flip side also on the record. This record sleeve serves as the frame as a frame of the work where both stories can be read. After realizing that having a book as a unique book work wasn't fulfilling enough for me, I decided to transform it into a multiple object. This decision led me to call the site A as a paperback edition which was featured as part of my solo exhibition in 2019 in a book house, a project gallery space located in Berlin and directed by Jae Kyung Kim. The core principle of the gallery is to present a book in shape of an exhibition, known as ein Buchform, ein Buchform in eine Ausstellung in German, thereby extending the traditional role of a book into three-dimensional space. This perspective emphasizes that books are not limited to existing solely on paper, but can extend and transcend and be translated into various physical and conceptual dimensions, serving as portals that offer diverse and enriching reading experiences. 
to her intricate interplay of text, image, and materiality, artists would challenge conventional, conventional modes of expression and invite us to engage with knowledge in new and transformative ways. In conclusion, we must acknowledge the profound significant artist books hold in expanding our understanding of the human experience, offering new perspectives and revealing new depths in what we thought we already knew. Thank you. Any <laughs> questions, or do you want me to talk about something specific I'm here? If not, it's also okay. <laughs> I enjoyed this very much, but one of the things that has bothered me, and I enjoy this very much, I have things similar, I don't think I have any words in my collections, but the thing that's bothered me for the last half century of doing this is how we make this genre applicable to the entire population, not just uh, another exclusive group of elites that are sitting in this room. How do we democratize this? Mm. Well, that's uh, not up to me. I mean, I guess um, I publish as much as I can publish with the budget that I have. So usually I make a hundred of them and I try to do what I'm exactly doing right now. I, I try to go to fairs, try to bring the books to other places where they would not exist otherwise. Um, but if I had more money, I would probably make more books and try to extend them and put them to be uh, also in other places. But I mean, for me, it's not about them reaching, for them to be every everywhere, but rather extending the practice into other places, not just institutional places. Could you talk a little more about your editorial process? How do you decide what you're going to publish? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that to start off, uh, I am interested in concept-based publications, uh, which means that uh, the books have to have a, an idea of wanting to become a book. So um, the artists that I invite to work with me, um, it doesn't matter really which medium they work uh, in, but I invite them to the studio and then we start talking and I ask them, why is it a book? Why, 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 do you, why cannot be, can it be something else? And from there we engage in a conversation and hopefully it turns to be an interesting publication. Um, but it's something that, you know, the decision I would say is I invite them first to have a conversation and I serve as a kind of platform. So it's kind of a pretext. I have this alter ego called Backbone Books, where it's not Claudia de la Torre anymore, but it's something else that kind of extends on who I am and allows me to invite other people. Um, and yeah, it's a process. But actually, it's yeah, concept-based publications. That's the first filter, if you could call it that way. Hi, thank you for exciting talk. Um, how do you distribute your books? Mm -hmm. Who help? Uh, who, does anyone, anyone help in order to mm -hmm. distribute it? So okay. where they s sold and whatever, mm -hmm. what libraries have? Mm -hmm. So uh, almost all of the editions are of 100, 100, 200 maximum. So I like having control of where they're sold. Um, so you can find them at the Printed Matter, you can find them uh, Florent Fleury in Paris, you can find them for me in, in the fairs. Almost at fairs is where uh, I sell the most, um, but I don't have them uh, so in too many places because it's just a hundred, so it's quite small amounts, I guess. Um, yeah, <coughs> Miriam Gallery as well, there's some here in New York. Yeah. Hola, Claudia. Hola. Uh, this was very inspirational. Uh, as a Mexican designer, I really enjoy it. Um, my question for you is, in what way do you connect your work with your culture, or in what way your culture connects with your work? Mm -hmm. 
No, that's an interesting conversation, interesting question, uh, because I've been living away from Mexico for over 15 years now. And um, I would not say that my work is influenced by me being Mexican. But what has always comes out is in how I solve problems. So Latins will always find ways of solving problems that other people don't seem to find. For, I live in Germany, right? So they're quite strict of, of, of like doing things in a certain way. And I always try to be creative and find ways of doing things um, with things that are not supposed to serve that purpose. So I can make a line using a cardboard uh, box or I can, uh, you know, find new ways of folding or find new materials to work with. So in that way, I improvise a lot. And I think that's something that's in my eyes, very Latin or Mexican, imp improvising, finding ways of doing things and making them work. So more in that way, ways of making. Yeah. Hi, um, I was just at the book fair, and uh, a Mexican American friend of mine who has a bookshop in Detroit um, is going to open a bookshop in Mexico City. And he's very excited, and he says it's a dynamic scene there, and uh, you know he's going to put his energy into that. Is that? Do you have some kind of like you were just saying, your Mexican base in Europe? Mm -hmm. But do you see yourself also engaging in Mexico, which seems to be a new developing kind of art scene? Yeah, I I feel every time I go there, things are different. So it's a, it's a city that's always in flux, it's always changing, it's super dynamic. So every time I'm there, I try to catch up, there are already five steps in front of me. Uh, and uh, I, I wish I was more involved, but I go there maybe one time a year, so I don't have the chance to really be part of this thriving community. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, I wish I was more involved in it, if I'm honest with you. Just the distance is like there's a very big distance, there's an ocean between us, so I, I cannot really um, be part of that community actively. Yeah, even if I wish to, I mean, it's, it's thriving, it's beautiful, it's also in the publishing scene, there's many, many wonderful projects. And I think like the difference maybe between like what happens in Europe and what happens in Mexico is at least that in Mexico everything is, or a lot of it is self-organized. It's like you really want it to happen. Like, there's no one who says, okay, come on, here's a grant, here's this. You really, it's like the power of wanting the thing to exist is what really pushes the work forward. And that's something that I really appreciate. Yeah. Hi, thank you so much. That was really great. Um, I wanted to ask about the expansive way that you define the art book. Um, I found that very inspiring, uh, but I also, it makes me wonder what then is the book? If a book can be, you know, if there's some decisions about form, some decisions about ideas, but not necessarily a page, not necessarily text, mm -hmm. like how are we then understanding the book, the art book? Um, yeah, uh, I guess I don't like definitions. I don't like to call myself a, a book-based artist or something like this. I just call myself an artist. And therefore, I am free to explore the idea of what a book is, right? Uh, also, beyond something being printed on paper. So, the space, the walls, the, the wide wall spaces in a, in, a, in a gallery setting would also be defined to me as an open space where I see them as white pages or um, things that come out of the idea of a book but are not specifically bound and on paper. So I, I, I like to expand that and give myself that freedom to think beyond the book as an object. And I guess that's a quality that um, only artists have to be able to just define it for themselves and not be stuck in a drawer and say, this is the only way I can see my practice. Because otherwise that would be quite boring for me. It keeps engaging me, you know, actually thinking, how can I expand it or how can I think it anew? Um, and also like 
you know, in exhibition settings, it's very difficult to show books, as you know. Um, so I try to find ways to amplify that um, so that both can exist. The book itself, like some, sometimes I show the book in itself, can exist, but it can also expand and even have, have its own life after the show. So, so like these multi-layered ways of being, that has the book and many other mediums don't. So that's why I really enjoy, they feed from each other, they can exist parallel, but they can also exist uh, in different realities at the same time. That's a quality of, of publishing as well. Mm -hmm. To uh, sort of um, add to that question, when you consider binding the book or putting the pages together, mm -hmm. does the context or the content of the pages um, influence how it gets bound mm -hmm. and do you do the binding mm -hmm. book binding at your facility or do you work with certain mm -hmm. book binders mm -hmm. or can you talk about that sure uh, binding is uh, book specific so the idea defines how it's going to be bound right so imagine that um i don't know uh, you're making a book about secrets so if you fold the pages and uh, make a japanese binding and you print the content inside of the pages. And you, know, you have to open the pages to look at it. So the way the, the, the book is bound has, this goes hand in hand, 100% with the idea behind the book. And um, when you talk about like, how do I produce them, I have a lot of machines in my studio. I do a lot of the work um, myself, but I'm not so interested, so interested in the, that the book looks crafty. So I'm not so interested in like the crafting of the book. I'm sorry, blur, blur, blur. Uh, but I'm more interested in um, just that it has the necessary the necessary things that it needs. So if it's a sheet of paper that's folded, that's what the idea needs. That's enough for me. Um, but binding is a very important um, it's a very important element in, in in the book because that's what that is what gives shape to the book to the book itself. So the binding and the size, the paper, everything goes hand in hand. Um, and yeah, I do a lot of the work in my studio also to reduce costs. Because sometimes, you know, I have crazy ideas. I mean, if I go to a binder, they say, well, they, 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 first they go underneath the table because they know I come with crazy binding ideas. And uh, secondly, um, I enjoy being part of this process, of the physical process of bookmaking. I, I, I find it meditative. I, I really enjoy it. It takes time. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hello. Um, I'm really curious about the worksheets that you were talking mm -hmm. about, the workshops you led, yeah. and how you guide. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they're very familiar with the bookmaking process, maybe they're very unfamiliar with the bookmaking process, but how have those prompts expanded? How have they changed over the years in which you use them? I'm assuming you find a prompt limits and then you open it. Okay. How those questions change? Yeah, I mean, actually, that's something that I just recently integrated because I realized that before starting hands on with, with paper, it's important to start thinking and putting things down on paper. Um, and so when I give these this printed pages to the participants, I tell them that they can leave something blank, it, it doesn't inspire them or they can take their time to answer it. But sometimes when we're in a process, we're lost. We, we don't know anymore what we were thinking about. So when they look, go back to the sheet, to the beginning of the workshop, and they see, oh, right, I actually was thinking of making this as a liberal. Hmm, okay, could, I can try it. It serves as an anchor to bring them back to maybe the, the first idea that they had and to be able to try them out. And um, they, they, the, the questions are just eight questions. I, I didn't want to show them there particularly, but if you're interested, I can also share them with you. Um, they, they've been very useful. And also some people are shy, you know, they, they don't necessarily, or they don't know how to express what they want. So sometimes writing or making sketches or just focusing for one hour, it really helps to kind of like calm down first and put things on paper without any pressure, just for them, and it really helps to, yeah. 
make them feel a bit more easygoing throughout the process. Yeah, the low pressure at the beginning is important. Um, I loved your question about um, your distribution and the intentionality of your limited run and kind of your desire to not have mass impact and go out. So from that, and you have your limited run of each book, what does your archive process look? And what groups are you letting archive your book? And what does your own archive look like? Oh my God. It's... <laughs> I... It's so funny because I really love, 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 love archiving and I'm obsessed with lists and like trying to get in order what I have. So I have them inside of these like very big uh, gray metal lockers because of course I want to protect them from the light. And um, I order them, I give them keywords. So I have like a system in my computer where I can give keywords and I number them so I know what I have. So because my studio and people going to my workshops, it's also important that they look at, at what other people have done. Um, so so I give uh, keywords and then therefore if they say, well, I'm interested in this and this, I can give them in the computer and then I know what I have and where to find it. But it's crazy. I wish it was more order sometimes. Um, and I also have, um, some drawers with one copy of everything that I've published so far. And that's a bit more like they are free to just open them. And, and I also keep every single dummy that I make because I find them to be really, sometimes even more, more inspiring than the final book because they show the process and how an idea can morph and change. Um, so I am a obsessive bookkeeper and trying to find order and I haven't found the perfect system yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and we can. Talk